Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Slow Art Friday. My name is Christy McMillan. I'm the Director of Learning and Engagement here at the Asheville Art Museum, and I'm joined by one of our master docents, Sarah Reinke, who will be leading today's conversation. Each Friday at 12 p.m., docents lead virtual, interactive conversations about a few artworks in our collection or special exhibitions. The goal is simple. Slow down, discover the joy of looking at art, and talk about the experience with others. For today's program, Sarah will lead us in an interactive conversation about three works in our, uh, three artworks in our collection. Two of the artworks also happen to be in special exhibitions right now. The one on the left is in Meeting the Moon, and the one in the center is in Fantastical Forms. We'll spend about 15 minutes or so with each one. Sarah will allow us time to look at each work on our own, slowly, before leading a conversation about each one with questions. As participants, we encourage you to engage in dialogue with Sarah, myself, and each other throughout the hour. A few notes before we get started, you probably noticed that your microphones and video were muted by default. We welcome you to turn on your video at any time. It's always nice to have a conversation with people that you can see. And in just a moment, I will make it so that you can turn on your microphone as well. For best experience, choose a quiet room and close the door. Please do silence any alerts from nearby devices. They can be very distracting during the conversation. If you do choose to turn on your video, try not to sit in front of a window, lamp, or other strong source of light or movement makes, us difficult, makes it difficult for us to see you. Use headphones and microphone for best sound quality. While you can log in using a smartphone, we recommend using a desktop, laptop, or tablet in order to see slides and meeting tools on a larger screen. Make sure that your screen name includes your first name and last initial or first name and last name, again, so that we know who we're talking to. In order to ask questions or make comments during the program, we welcome you just to unmute your microphone when Sarah or I ask for questions or comments. It's the easiest and most effective way to participate. Another way to participate is to either type into the chat box or to raise your hand in the participant sidebar, and I will call on you and ask you to unmute your microphone. Typing into the chat box or raising your hand can take a while to get to you, so please do just unmute your microphone when Sarah or I ask for questions or comments. Finally, we are recording. If you prefer not to be recorded, make sure that your video and audio remain muted and use the chat box to submit questions and comments. At this time, I'm going to make it so that folks can unmute their microphones. Please do leave your microphone muted unless you're actively asking a question or making a comment. Before we get started, does anybody have any questions? All right, a lot of familiar faces here, so they know the drill. Sarah, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, it's going to be clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you all for um, joining us on this great Good Friday. It's a little chilly, but it's a pretty, pretty day out there. And uh, we are going to be talking about um, three uh, ceramic pieces, pottery. And as we look at the first one, you're all are pros, so you kind of know the drill. We want you to look at it. Um, up and down, side to side, and then we will um, start the discussion. And um, I haven't done a slow art for a while, and I miss it. So I really, really am excited to be here and uh, share in this discussion. Uh, it always uh, makes me feel uplifted. So if we want to begin with that first slide, Okay, so as we said, actively view it, pay attention to details. So, um, what do we see? What's going on? I definitely see a jug, a vessel, but in it are faces and I would describe them as women, men and children. And I noticed that, that they're facing from left to right, but then as, the, as it curves around, 
it looks like there's faces in the opposite direction facing mm -hmm. right to left. So they're like facing in towards each other. Exactly. And I appreciate that observation. Um, it, it's hard on uh, three dimensional pieces in this format. And I really appreciate it when um, people try to see around the corner a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for that very much. Um, <clears throat> What is the first word that comes to mind when you when you look at this artwork? They look like they're African American uh, faces. Okay. Anything else? I see mm -hmm. a, a jug. This is Karen. I see a jug full of souls. Full of souls, S O U L S. L S, okay. yes. Okay. Hmm. So faces that that uh, are are full of souls, emotion. Um, what it, else? It also could be a jug that those people would actually carry, you know, to get water or something in their community. Absolutely great. That's a that's a great observation. Um, Anybody? Did, is there a word that comes to mind? Go ahead. Karen, can you, can you tell us how big it is? Uh, yes, it is 11 and a half by six and three fourths by six and three fourths inches. To me, it looks like a gathering. Like all of these people look like they're very close together, um, but they're all sort of facing at least the ones that we can really see well. They're facing in one direction as if they have a purpose. Yes. Does, do, do they um, elicit a feeling of there's a story? There's a story here. Mm -hmm. and, and what makes you say that? There are different ages represented. It different looks ages. like they're all female though. It looks like they're all female. To me, they, uh, they, 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 the words that come to my mind are in a strange way, soft and strong. Soft the colors um, I find very soft and, uh, and tactile. Um, and I, I believe that's um, a girl on the left and the pony, and she's got a ponytail, which is the handle, uh, which is so sweet. I see men in there as well, mm -hmm. but it, it could just be short hair. Yeah. Right, right. Um, I think I see, I think I see Martin Luther King, um, right, right to the right of the woman, the central woman with the earring. Yes. Oh, Sandy, that, um, um, that, what's different about that profile? It's full face. It's full And mustache. Face. Is, and mm -hmm. is, and is, is, is. Yeah, it's not a profile. It's not a profile. Not a profile. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, so why is uh, it? Why is it? Ooh, are you all hearing us? Yes. Yes. I yes. don't know what that's coming from. I don't have any devices on. If folks could just leave their microphones muted unless they're talking, sometimes it's a little glitch, and doing that will fix it. Oh, thank you, Christy. I, that was, yeah. Okay. So uh, what do we want to say about that profile? Why is it different? Not a profile. It's, it's full face. Right. It's, it's, right. it's right. Even though we're only seeing yeah. half of it, it's, it's full front. Um, and every one of them is individualized. Mm-hmm. They're, they're all, you could, they're all, it seems like all different people. And they may, I am going to say that I think that they were all real people. Okay. That, that they may be that they're specifically inter, showing re, individual people. Maybe we may not know who they are. Listening to. Pardon me? He might be the one they're listening to because the one the profiles on the far right are, are facing. facing him and the ones on the left are facing him. Mm. 
So do you think that uh, that was uh, a, uh, there was intent when the artists created that? And I'm going to say, because we can't see the other side. So I'm going to say, and from the research that I did, it only mentions one profile that is straight on. And um, that got me thinking in all kinds of directions. But uh, I, um, I love the fact that it, it's kind of a, a hidden secret. You know, when, mm -hmm. you, when you look at mm -hmm. the, the artwork, that is not the first thing that you see. And I, and I really enjoyed the fact that somebody noticed the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the other the other thing is um, if you take that that man out, you've got two groups that are looking at each other, and it's it's almost a confrontational um, feeling for me. But by having that man looking out, it's a bridge almost. Um, okay. Yeah. I was right. thinking the same thing, Kathy. But one thing that I also noticed, Sarah, that nobody has uh, talked about yet and that honestly I'm just noticing for the first time is we have all of these really beautiful, uh, beautifully depicted profiles that are very easy to read. But then there are some over mm -hmm. here that are more abstracted right. yeah, I um, that. or yeah. that aren't mm -hmm. as fully mm -hmm. sort of fleshed out with hair and... Um, uh, facial features, jewelry, as some of the ones that are sort of in front. And it seems to maybe alternate. I'm finding it to be really uh, add a lot of interest. It, it does. Um, to me, I, I don't want to put in my own <laughs> interpretations because I like hearing from you all. But it does, it does remind me of a crowd. And, and in a crowd as it as you know you, you can't see the faces that that are are going back you can see the faces that are more um, in front and um, particularly woven with the idea that on the side of the artwork that we can't see those people are looking towards the man that is giving us a front view um, so how would this uh, how would it feel? Oh, go ahead, Karen. So I think somebody already used the word ancestors, but that really rings true to me. Uh, somebody typed it in. Oh. I, I mean, I wonder if this isn't a grandmother and and descendants and and mm -hmm. uh, people going all the way back, tracing roots way back to perhaps ancestral roots. Um, so I, I see that as almost this jug is in, holding an entire um, ancestry. I think that there is a lot of community. I agree with you completely. I think that there's a lot of community that is reflected in, um, in this jug. If, if you were to touch it, how would it feel? Textured. Textured? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, and even, so, and even, oh, okay. I'm, it's Billy. Billy, if you could just leave your um, microphone off unless you're um, making a comment, that would be great. We're getting an echo from your microphone. Oh, shoot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Again, there we go. <laughs> anyway, um, Sarah, so it, would feel, it would feel very textured. How about, and I, if you can um, use your pointer, Christy, for just a second. The, the, the woman who has an earring who is in the front and um, the, the um, uh, scarf or hat that she is wearing, mm -hmm. would that have a different texture than say her um, cheek? Mm -hmm. So you feel when you, when you touch the piece, you, it does seem like you would feel those ridges. And in the abstract um, uh, profile that is to the left of the woman I just mentioned, do you think that you would feel those ridges? Possibly. Yeah, would feel mm -hmm. that. Oh, excuse me. Uh, it, it would feel like water to me almost because it's ripply. <laughs> I would use the word determined uh, in terms of the feeling or the emotion of the people that I'm seeing. And to me, they look to be 
um, what I would say, well kept. Oh, they have hats and jewelry. Oh, and I would say definitely determined. Determined. Okay. So we 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 think that there is going to be texture. Um, it, it does mm -hmm. give a sense of uh, determination. Um, so, what would what would you title this? If you were, if you had the opportunity to mm -hmm. give this artwork a name, what would you? What might that be? Generations. Generations. <laughs> yeah, I think that one thing that we had pointed out sort of early on, but I don't know that we've talked a lot about it, is the the different age groups here. Mm -hmm. That along the bottom, you've got the uh, younger generation, but you also clearly have sort of adults um, mm -hmm. of different ages as well. And this little gentleman here with like the baseball hat on, he looks like mm -hmm. he's maybe an older adolescent. Mm -hmm. So you have sort of this really nice spread in ages represented. Do you know, what is the uh, figure next to it? It looks very abstract next to the uh, gentleman in the uh, baseball cap. Right here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So is does that look like a profile to us? No. It looks, it looks very abstract. It looks like as if it's, it is some facial um, features, but on an abstract level, there's the mouth, there's the eyes, and maybe the nose. I don't know why the um, dots are um, in the position that they're in. But um, I, I do agree. If you can put your pointer to um, those three yeah. lines right. go out from the dot and like, there you go, stop there. Right. Right there. So that's kind of his mouth. And you have uh, a little, a little, um, curved point for the nose, and then up higher, another triangle that might be the eye. And then if you look down below, and I didn't see the face, but what I saw was the collar right there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it looks oh, like yeah. it is, it, it does look like it has the intent of being a type mm -hmm. of, um, uh, a, a type of profile and if you mm -hmm. think in term now, I now I can't get my eyes off of it. Um, if you think in term of generations, um, it could easily go back uh, much further than just uh, here in the United States. The other thing ne next to it, it looks like two oh, other yeah. semi profiles um, that there was actually three facial shapes there. There are, yes, I agree. And ladies, I hate to say this. This always happens to me. We're going to have to move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, go, go ahead, Karen. We're not done morning. unpacking this yet, Sarah. I know, but we won't get to the other pieces I at was, all. I was, I was just curious quickly about the abstract area you were just highlighting, and it looks like some kind of counting Okay. You know, some kind of, um, I don't want to use, I do not want to use the word primitive, but I don't know like what Like an word. abacus or something? Yeah. 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 Counting the, the, the hundreds of years of generations, maybe. Uh, it it, so it reminds me of stowage. So can you say who the artist is? We will. Okay. We will. We'll get to it. Yes, because, I mean, there, there is so much to talk about this artwork, and, and uh, I, we are going to have to go on, but... Um, it is on display, and it is on display um, until, hang on, uh, um, mid-April. No, this, this one's on display. Oh, this is, no, this one isn't on display. I'm sorry, Christy. I don't think this Christy. one's on view, no. Um, so it, there's, there's tons of um, movement. We haven't even gotten to any kind of patterns or movement or asymmetry. There is so much that goes into this um, particular artwork that, yeah, I just, I, I could talk about this for the whole time. And we're only seeing one side of it. <laughs> we're only seeing one side. But um, we do um, need to, 
uh, move on. So uh, if we could show, yep, let's show that label. And um, what about that name? And its relationship uh, with the jug, yeah. with the artwork. What do you, is that apropos? I think it is. I think the name mm -hmm. fits. I mean, I was going to suggest as a title together or United We Stand, something of that effect. But pride, I think, does fit it as, as the, I think it's apropos. I think he may have used people uh, from his real life, like they've done in Renaissance paintings, the the art the the artist will pre, pre, uh, depict himself or uh, others around him that he is in contact with, and it, and I think that he has done the same thing with many of these um, mm -hmm. faces that some of them, besides the Martin Luther King, that others are um, real people. Maybe his ancestors, maybe his relatives now, or his friends, or his community. And look at it, and even in relation to that picture uh, there, that woman actually looks like uh, she may be in the, um, on the vase. That's Rosa, um, uh, Winton's wife. They are a team. He does, uh, he, he throws the pottery, and then the, the, they're incised. So they're etched in. And, and if you were to feel it, you could feel you know, those etching marks. Um, so that's how it's created, by taking away mud. And that's how the design is created. Um, Karen? That looks like him in the pot. Yeah. He's looking out and that's his family surrounding him. Ah. And they are very, very personal. I mean, I think that their pieces uh, are, are very, I mean, most artists consider their pieces personal, but I, I do get a real story from um, uh, the Eugene Pottery. And uh, Rosa says of pride, this collage of faces is intended to convey to the viewer how pride can be the only thing that holds people together. The handle that someone mentioned is um, formed by connecting the representation of two women's braids together. Hmm. So, uh, if we were to see it on the other side, mm -hmm. you would probably get um, a better a better feeling of that. But whether reflecting on the past or exploring a concept such as dignity and pride, the um, Eugene's works cause the viewer to be captured by the artist's remarkable ability to speak through the clay medium. And they're, they're great storytellers. Mm -hmm. uh, they really do speak with uh, the artwork that they produce. And uh, they're very happily married. They live in Cowpens, South Carolina. Their studio is in their backyard and that is where they work today. So it's, and their kids are involved as well. So it is a, it is kind of a family affair. Their kids push them into pottery after they retired. And mm. so that's what they have not been at this all that long. And um, certainly mm. uh, have learned a lot and they, they're self-taught. And okay, so if we can go on to the next one. And this piece as well, take your time. Okay. All right. So where are your eyes drawn? My eyes are drawn near the top, um, which look like the tops of the trees near the opening of the vessel. But I happen to like this particular piece. Is blue is one of my favorite colors. And I love the tones and the shading and the different um, shades of the blue. And it almost looks textured to me as well. On the These look like mm -hmm. trees, trees to me. And it does look very textured. So I think it's a very, very pretty vase. It is. It is. A, it is a very pretty vase. It looks um, landscape. 
It, it, it has a mm -hmm. land, looks like a landscape that you think of in a painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and it, well, and it kind of does it, what, what can we say if, it, if it's a landscape? What can we say about foreground, middle ground, and um, background? Well, it has good perspective. Mm -hmm. It does. And um, to me, it has a little bit of a Chinesey, Japanesey feel to it. I think so too. Um, what does that, does it convey a mood? Peaceful, very peaceful. I think that might be the moon, maybe on the right. Mm -hmm. Yes, right there. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that. Yeah. Could be the moon. So yeah, so and the moon is kind of providing a light, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. it, I, I believe it it takes our minds to something a little ethereal um, and very very peaceful. Uh, so what about the color value? Even if I hadn't have seen the moon, which I didn't notice until <laughs> just a second before Laurel said, "Is that the moon?" <laughs> I think that the fact that it was different shades of blues, um, darker blues, and sort of um, not very crisp, you know, the Eugene uh, pot that we saw before this one was very crisp, and, you know, we could see the lines, and this one is more sort of ephemeral, mm -hmm. um, it made me think of nighttime, um, mm -hmm. or one of the in-between times, like right before dawn, or a little after dusk, you know, it's it's that sort of time of day where um, you start to lose the crispness of outlines and of, of objects in the landscape. Right. Yeah. So um, what, what about the design? I mean, uh, we talked a little bit about perspective. What about proportion? It's very, very typical of viewing um, a vista where the darkest I are items like the trees are the are in the foreground and then as you work back into the middle ground it gets lighter and then the um foreground is the lightest and it's if you look at the mountains you know up on the parkway it does the same thing at, at first and if the well, design the design of the trees is reflects the design of the, the vase. In other words, the vase is tall and narrow and the trees are tall and narrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Billy. I, I was just gonna say, I couldn't, I can't tell on this screen. Uh, it, at first I thought the background was a picket fence, but it must be, it, now oh. I'm looking at mm -hmm. it and it looks more like mountains. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. of course. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, it does. I mean, it gives you a sense of perspective. Very definitely, something is off in the distance, mm -hmm. and um, and it's able to do that kind of low. That is not the feeling that I get when you when your eyes move up that vase uh, as we move up. What about the shapes of those trees? I think the trees are sort of abstract, but they fit with the shape of the vase. And I think there's balance there. But I also think it's interesting just comparing the last one that we just viewed was basically all people. And this one is no people. So right. kind of interesting. Sure. But they, they have a lot of look like quaking aspens. Oh, Gosh, you know your trees. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm liking that. <laughs> they, they look very oriental to me. And and we had, uh, I think that um, someone had, had mentioned that aspect yeah. of it um, earlier. Uh, but um, the they oriental or ornamental, um, they that's where my eyes are first drawn because the, the shapes of the trees um, and, and I think um, unusual to me. The, the blue, blue is sort of a calming color. It is. And then you've got the trees that are, that are um, a little abstract and calming because there isn't a lot of detail in there. 
if you'd had a red vase with trees and with lots of detail, you would have had a different feeling when you looked at it. So, yeah, so um, let, let's go there a little bit. Um, if, if this was more than one color, I mean, there it is more than one color, but it, they're all different values of the same color, excluding the moon. The, the moon is, is uh, a little more white-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, how, how would, how would it be affected if, let's say, the ground was brown? Well, I think that the tonality is, is just beautiful and it is very peaceful. Um, and in terms of the ground, one of the things I love about this is that the dark, you would think that the dark would be on the ground as well. And if the dark blue were down there, um, it would lend a heaviness, I think, to it. Um, and this has a very, um, almost a lightness. Your eye does go, in a Japanese sense, um, it goes all around the, the, the vase, um, the pottery. Because um, so if it is dark blue, blue you, like, you, like you said, Kathy, it's dark blue at the top. Yeah. Let's say that was also at the bottom. That, that, would, that Would that change our uh, immediate reaction? To, to how it looked? Would, would it so. make it look more balanced or think, would it make it look less balanced? I think it would make it look less balanced because um, it would, your eye is drawn up. And to me, that's the normal way of looking at art. And my comment also about the moon, the moon looks like it's flat in the surface. It does not look like it's textured or sculpted in. It looks almost as if it's painted in or painted in the, at the, on the same um, plane as the yes. uh, surface. It's not textured. So, so uh, if you felt it, it would all feel smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's right? around the move. Not, not the trees. Okay. Um, the trees, the, the trees in the foreground look textured to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe there's love... a little texture on the uh, bottom uh, in the on the midscape, but it, that's hard to tell. I so... would love to put different color flowers for different seasons in here. I could see blue flowers, <laughs> orange flowers, <laughs> flowers, <laughs> flowers, flowers, yellow flowers. You wouldn't oh. do you wouldn't do those blue corn flowers? <laughs> <laughs> Almost any color combination through the season. <laughs> Of, would really accentuate it and, and make it look different and the same at the same time. <laughs> and even without flowers, do you get a sense of movement as you look at the vase? Even if it, even, oh, yeah. you know, as it is now. The the there's an interesting depth of field to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, is anybody else getting an, I, I mean, I totally get the Japanese thing, but I, from a distance, when I look at it, I, I just think of arts and crafts for some reason. Cannot well, explain. Yeah, I guess, uh, no, I, I think that, uh, that it is very much um, influenced by arts and crafts. I would agree. Um, even if it does have a little bit of uh, an oriental feel, we'll kind of get into that um, here in a bit. So what about um, patterns? Do you, do you see any patterns on this side? I keep always having to say. <laughs> well, you could say that there's a, a symmetry in, in the trunks. They're mm -hmm. all tall and thin. And, and the way the foliage on the trees is, is you know, similar shapes. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. So we have some similar shapes and there's some symmetry. Uh, and, and we feel that there is a little bit of, uh, movement, uh, with the, the, um, trees and, and the, particularly the different shapes of the trees. Um, it looks like, uh, the pattern continues around look there on the um left hand side or our, mm -hmm. our left hand side as if there are additional trees there 
we I think on the very left hand side you can yeah. see just the, the mm -hmm. little bit of dark blue mm -hmm. that indicates there it is right there yeah yeah that's what made me think that there are additional trees there yeah. and that that pattern may be going around the vase now at close up look at the if, put it put it back at close up for just a second so now uh, what do you think that texture might be the same texture as the trees that it's but there. You, is it a raised yes I think it is no, I think when you, uh, I, I like this view yeah. because even the very lower bit of the very top tree and it, which is like kind of dark blue and then there's a lighter blue above it. That mm -hmm. to me gives me a, a, a very much uh, a sense of, of um, a, a texture right. that um, is potentially raised. I, I think rather than being carved like the previous one, Mm -hmm. uh, this looks to me technique wise as if the potter has used a, a very, uh, ha has created the trees and then slipped and, and applied them to uh, just, just the, uh, the branches or the, the leaves. And then if we look closer, can we look closer at the trunks? I think that they're, I think those are painted. Yeah, they look yeah. so so that it's a a, a very uh, yeah a wet application of clay to the side of the of a thrown vase, and, and then the rest of it's painted on. And that is one of the reasons why I chose these two because they are distinctly different in their process, and one is incised like the jug. And uh, one is uh, applied. Applied. Mm -hmm. So, Micah, sort of back in, it's hard sometimes to get to those comments. So, yeah, definitely just unmute yourself. Um, but she had said earlier on um, that it looked like um, the arts and uh, from the arts and crafts movement to her. Um, did you want to comment on that anymore, Micah Jean? Because I think that that's sort of where we're going with the thread yeah. that we're talking about now. Um, don't have much else to say. <laughs> I just, it, I love the arts and crafts period. Um, and I, I do feel the Japanese or Oriental element, but overall it just feels arts and crafts to me. So I'm kind of out of it today. I had the second Moderna shot yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't expect, <laughs> don't expect much. Christy don't loves ex us. I oh, got about two hours of sleep last bed. night, Micah Jean. I was right there with you. Oh, so, really? Yeah. I have one last comment and then um, we'll ask for the label to be shown because I have a video that you might find interesting. Mm. Go ahead, Karen. This is Karen. I, uh, I, I love the, the play between the sym symmetry of the pot and then the asymmetry, I think, of the trees, because they're different heights, different lengths. Different and they're widths. placed in different, you know, some are in the foreground, and then that one is towards the background. So for me, that creates this beautiful tension. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, well, thank you. I, 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 again, I always hate to have to cut us short, but... <laughs> <laughs> the, the last piece is equally as wonderful, so I want to get to it. As we're transitioning to this, um, Sarah, this uh, uh, the label, just to let you know that there was some conversation in the chat about the color of flowers that you could put in this phase, and I thought it was interesting that Laurel had um, mentioned some really bold colors and um, Kathy had agreed with her that, you know, maybe yellow or orange would look nice, but then sort of with the afterthought that, but those bold colors with a lot of contrast would actually okay. detract from the vase. Well, I, and I have to tell you, I do get wrapped up. I'm very happy that um, Chris, Christy watches the chat box because I get wrapped up in seeing all your faces and, and I, I can barely walk and talk at the same time. So <laughs> doing the chat box is out of my wheelbox. <laughs> but at any rate, this is a piece of new pottery. It was made in 1930. Um, that was closer to the end of their run. They stopped production in 1940. So um, 
the first pieces that, and, and by the way, the, the Newcomb pottery came out of the, it was the Sophie Newcomb um, school and it was uh, part, for, for most of its life, it was part of Tulane University. And um, that's where they got their funding. That's how they got teachers that, that were uh, wanted to be uh, in an academic environment and still do their artwork. Um, it is considered one of the most uh, significant American art potteries for the first half of the 20th century and was very, very influenced by English arts and craft movements. Uh, at the time, this is, oh, it started in like 1895. And at the time, and they, I think that they continued this most of the life of the pottery. Um, the men were the potters because that was not considered women's work. And the women um, were the ones that that um, decorated it and finished the product. It's It was uh, amazing to me that women who studied at the Newcomb College were allowed to sell pottery they created, provided that it was judged um, professional enough by a jury of academics within the um, Newcomb School. So the Newcomb provided employment to roughly 90 Newcomb uh, graduates, all women, and produced 70,000 distinct pieces of work. Um, by providing art vases, these women's, women developed valuable skills, created an income, and made a name for themselves in a pretty unprecedented way. And some even felt that the women's presence in the workforce being paid paved the way for other women to join the workforce. And I thought that that was kind of interesting. Um, it is easily identified by the, the initial ones were kind of more glossy, high gloss, um, but by the late 1800s, um, they tended to have soft but waxy semi-gloss finishes and pastel decorations carved in relief with medium blue grounds. The decorations echo the New Orleans environs of bayou and oak trees, daffodils and crocus flowers. That's what often decorated the vases. The muted matte colors with Spanish moss and trees and florals were also um, seen. And I have a video that I would like to share with you. And the reason I chose this video is because if they're not talking about this piece, it is one that is extraordinarily similar. <laughs> and then I'll tell you when to stop, right, Christy? Move on to this, move on to this piece. So in 1910, Paul Cox, who is the chemist and engineer here at Newcomb. So there we go. I, oh, shoot, I can't see it either. We've already talked about we have the artists who are the women, and we have the potter, George um, uh, Joseph Meyer. <laughs> and so they also had a chemist. So, George, uh, gosh, um, Paul Cox is the chemist. He was in charge of mixing the glazes, firing the kilns. Um, digging the clays, kind of figuring out what temperature each clay needed, how it would react to different glazes. Um, and he was the first, you know, also kind of this industry side, um, but he was the first to really master this matte glaze. As you can see the comparison, very shiny. This one is a, a lot more translucent. So in 1910 is when um, Paul Cox and the, the Newcomb Pottery just kind of transitions away from this shiny glaze and um, is primarily making the matte glaze pieces. I love looking at these two together because they're really similar shapes. Um, they're similar subject matters, they're trees, but you can really see the huge difference, the huge leap that Newcomb takes here. Um, this piece, op opposed to the incised guy who will move over, um, this piece we would consider to be, a, we call it a sculpted piece. Um, as you can see, and we'll get some nice close-ups here for you, um, the women would have been both adding and taking away 
from the clay. So instead of just a two dimension where you have um, a cut line, there's a lot more shape and a lot more variant in, in depth. So that's how we get this really sculptedness of the trees and the leaves and the moss. Um, and you get to see a lot of dimension. And so this becomes much more of a landscape opposed to just the, the trees, that's a design that's repeated. You can see this has a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. Uh, I also like to note that it's not a repeated pattern. This is one image. If I took a knife, cut it down the side, and laid it out flat, it would be like one landscape image. Um, and um, so that's a huge jump that Newcomb is taking. You can see the bottom of this piece. Um, very similar markings to the other ones. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I was intrigued. That piece is very, very close <laughs> yes. to the one that we have in our collection. So I thought that it was nice and it gave us a little bit of a different view. Okay, so uh, let's go on. So these are large. Okay. <laughs> we'll oh. end on a little bright, happy, whimsy note. <laughs> so go ahead and actively view. There's a lot to see. All right. And, and when the, when the view, when the um, image came up, it, it did get some smiles and, <laughs> and some actual audible chuckles, which I kind of, <laughs> so let's start off with first word. Attitude. Attitude. Anyone <laughs> else? Feminine. Oh, Feminine. Ladybug. Ladybug. Great, great. Anything else? Dress up. Dress up. Cool. I love this popcorn, ladies. <laughs> um, anything else? Headless. <laughs> Headless. There you go. <laughs> Play like Playful. These are all wonderful. I so appreciate it. Somehow I, I see it saying, well. <laughs> With your little hands on your hips. Kimbo, yes. Okay. Um, so what, what do you think? What's going on? <laughs> do you think that it is supposed to embody uh, your imagination to conjure up? Something that, that uh, is animate, is inanimate? I think it's purely uh, fun. I mean, somebody with a great imagination has cooked up all of the, you know, there's a car their cartoon face on the left and mm -hmm. the idea that the handles are, are arms. I mean, I just think it's a fun piece. It, whimsy, I think, it, whimsy, is, I think yeah. it is a very, very whimsical piece. And um, what, what, what about the designs? Uh, what, what do they, what do they make you think of? I'm having a hard time figuring out what they are. Like, uh, you know, saying that that was a caricature at first, I was thinking it was a bird on its side. So, uh, oh, I don't know. I'm just having a hard time, aside from the ladybug, <laughs> figuring out what the shapes are representing. Yeah, to me, that looks like a turkey or some sort of bird. I guess not a turkey. It doesn't have the waddle, but, you know, some sort of bird that has you know, hair in addition to, to uh, feathers sort of seen from a below, looking up at it from below or something. It's such an like odd neck. animal. Like, like, like the an neck ostrich head. head. Pardon me? It looks like an ostrich head. Yeah, ostrich yeah. Head. thank you. So uh, what, um, the blue the looks like a I, I just think of Seuss when, when I see these images. I don't, uh, do they have to represent anything? No. Well, I mean, they're just, they're all just mishmashed because it's just fun. But isn't, isn't that thing in the center like a, a rabbit? Something with teeth? 
I think it reminds me of something yeah. of a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. And, and the blue looks like a dinosaur too. It's like a little dinosaur being eaten by this giant big dinosaur. Well, and, and what about the black and white at the bottom? This one? Yes. It looks like a puppy. Looks like a puppy. Yeah, it looks like a dog, and the it other. Looks almost like, and yet, yet that yeah, it looks almost like there's a nose there and an eye. Exactly. Yeah, an e maybe an ear, like a dog ear. Yeah. <laughs> In yeah. abstract. Next to it. It is well, and all right. So let's uh, talk about. It does look very abstract. What about the section right above what we're calling the ostrich head? Looks like. Uh, Pillars, columns. Pillars? Or, or, or a cage. Uh, yeah, cage. A cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so what about the balance of this piece? What can I, we say I, about I, that? Color. The, the yellow at the, at near the waist and then below, and the same with the pink with the ladybugs, and you go up, there's more pink, and the pink X at the top, and you've got the blue and a little bit of green, and yet the brown is at the bottom, the middle, the top. It, it's kind of intriguing with the balance of um, the colors. All done in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's balance it's seems to come to us through color. Go ahead, Kathy. I think it's a contrast in, um, asymmetrical balance with the, the the design and the shapes that are that are in the I call it a, a dress um, versus symmetrical um, of the shape of the pottery in total which is symmetrical but it feels asymmetrical as well it, it, it does. does because the outline of this dress you know are the curves and the arms are the curves. And then you have in the center this pink thing with more, more. I mean, there are some curves, but then there's also that horizontal line. Uh, so anyway, yeah, there, it's a little unsettling. Oh, does it look <laughs> like it might come to life? Mm -hmm. It almost reminds me of some kind of a fabric um, and just somebody was playing around and just putting designs on it. And be, maybe because of the, the dress connotation, I thought the same thing mm -hmm. with the, um, the waistline and the hands on the hips and the um, this pattern at the uh, waist, almost as if it's a belt or um, some stitching or uh, a yoking there. And those dots almost look like buttons. They almost mm -hmm. look like buttons. That's right. So um, I always, I always wanted to just put a little tiny chipped teacup by it because it just looks like it ought to be in Beauty and the Beast to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's or that Alice in Wonderland would also. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland would work. Yes. Uh, uh, on on. And uh, then what's the top? What's the very top? It looks to me like her head's getting sucked in. <laughs> well, so if you want to talk about proportion, what, yeah, what do you, what do we think about that top? I was it's out, it's out, out of proportion. Up. It doesn't work. It's almost like it's a brain. Yeah. A brain. <laughs> I was going to say flower petals, but I like the brain. <laughs> Susie? We women have brains. <laughs> Susie, I, go ahead. I, I work with clay. And so I'm curious whether that top would come off. It doesn't look like it would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I'm also extremely curious about the inside of the bottom and how it was constructed. Because it looks like, I'm not sure, what, where that trim edge is connected to the rest of the pot. I'd like to see that. Oh, I love that, Susie. Yeah. That's wonderful. That is like an in the know. Because I would not have even um, thought of that. Although I did, we will be talking a little bit about how it was made. Okay, uh, see, to me, it looks like almost he made sort of a classic 
maybe amphora shape of a pot, but then mm -hmm. something happened to the bottom. And so he cut it off and then put another <laughs> bowl on the bottom of it or something. Right, it was supposed to, to be it. smooth at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> well, this um, is so much more interesting having it this way. It's quite curious. I, I really totally like agree. And but look is, at that. It looks like where the puppy eye that we keep calling it, it looks like he continued the pattern um, underneath. Underneath, yeah. yeah. That yeah. I, maybe it was almost done, or like you said, it broke off. And he said, "Okay, I'm just going to continue," and just became creative and continued it. Well, we're going to go into the artist, and and that is such a great statement about this particular artist. By the way, um, this is a part of Fantastical Forms, and if you do have some time over the weekend, we would love to have you come on home and see these things in, in person. This guy ends his stay this time um, on Sunday. No, on mm. Monday. Monday. Uh, Sarah, so if you can, go ahead. Oh, Sarah. So uh, maybe maybe uh, you all or some of you know who the artist is. I didn't peek and I didn't look. Well, we're going to, we are running a little short on time, but I'm hoping that you all are able yeah. to stay, Christy, so that we I can just, talk about the artist. I just wanted to say that everyone was saying he, and in my mind, I would have thought it was a female artist. That's all. <laughs> it is a he. Okay. If we, and Christy, do you have time? Is that a yes? Okay. Um, the artist is Don Reitz. This was created in 1988. And um, it's, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly. And Gobies? Ongobe. Ongobe, um, which is white or colored slip applied to pottery, usually for decoration or to improve the surface texture. A slip is a liquid mixture of slurry of clay and or other materials suspended in water. It has many uses in the production of pottery and other ceramic wares. So that is um, the definite, that's a description of what it is. Um, Don Reitz is, you can tell by his picture, he, he has a great sense of humor. And um, he, he was very, very innovative in, in um, creating artwork. He did kind of, he revived a, a centuries old technique of uh, salt firing in which salt is added to hot kiln and it yields textured surfaces far different from those made with conventional glazes. And he started to pretty much throw anything that he could in the kiln to see how it would react and the textures that it would make. Um, he, he was interviewed by a woman, Jody uh, Klaus, who um, was the curator of Don Wright's Clay Fire Salt and Wood, and it was an ex uh, exhibition in 205, and she uh, had a conversation with him and says many things. Um, he was a really, really fearless experimenter. He would throw all kinds of stuff in there, anything from copper plate to banana peels, just to see <laughs> what would happen. <laughs> He's a funny guy. And um, he, does, he does kind of lean towards a Chinese or Egyptian flair um, in some of his works. I don't think that is quite so seen here. Um, and he had, he had a very classical approach, but he also kind of had a very uh, row 1960s approach. So it was a mixture of, of both of them that would come up with some of his uh, artworks. Um, he, he, he did many things uh, in his life before he became an artist. And one of them was a um, butcher. And he says, mm -hmm. He says, in a way, it's an art. Um, you have to know how to cut and display your product, everything from putting booties on lamb chops to arranging <laughs> a crown roast. I could cut, I'd, I'd love this for my Easter table. I could cut rosettes on a ham so that when it was baked, they would open up in beautiful patterns. Mm. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness, I would love that. <laughs> so this is part of the Sarah series. 
he was in a very, very bad uh, automobile accident in 1982. Hmm. And um, at the same time, he lost his, while he was recovering, he lost his father and he heard that his niece was young niece, like uh, nine, was um, battling cancer. Mm. So they started a correspondence and um, his niece would send him drawings. And that's where some of these fantastical forms came from. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at the end of his life, he died in 2014, and um, near the end of his life, he said, here I am, 78 years old, working in mud, and I get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I hope that you've enjoyed today. I, 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 I always feel guilty because I think I get more pleasure out of it than anybody. <laughs> but um, this is on display as is the Newcomb piece. The Newcomb piece will be on display until the end of April, close to the end of April. And we are just excited to see your bodies in the museum as things yes. lighten up and we get vaccinated. Come on home. <laughs> <laughs> Looking thank forward you, to it. Thanks, all Sarah, right. for leading us today. And thank you, all of you, for coming and for contributing to the conversation. I always, uh, I say this every single week, but it's true every <laughs> week. I learned so much and I hope that that you did too. Um, next Friday, we will not have Slow Art Friday because the following day, Saturday, is International Slow Art Day. So Slow Art Day is celebrated around the world one day uh, every year, the same day every year around the world. Uh, and this year it's Saturday, April 10th. So instead of having a Slow Art Friday, we're just going to celebrate uh, Slow Art Day. Uh, on April the 10th, Saturday at 1 uh, p.m. So as a little bit off, we usually do 12 p.m., but this will be 1 p.m. Um, and we will have two docents, um, Doris Potash, one of our master docents, and Carol Fallender, um, a touring docent who will be leading us uh, in conversation around three uh, artworks in the museum's collection that uh, have the theme of spring and renewal. So if you would mm -hmm. like to join us, please sign up on our website, ashevilleart.org, and we will see you guys soon. Take care. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye now.